Hey everybody, so here we've got another MetaZoo booster box. This is MetaZoo booster box number, I think it's five, but this is, they're not in order at this point, I've said this before. Um, this one was opened back in August, I've just been kind of opening new ones and old ones, and the audio got all messed up, so here I am re-recording it and showing it to you. This booster box, you can see, is really scratched. Um, this first order of booster boxes of UFO that I got were covered in scratches. And this one you can see just with the lighting. And I was trying to do this top-down recording back then. We've got the sticker on here that was sent to space. i got a lot of these stickers now. I think that uh, I'm going to have to end up keeping them somewhere. Maybe i got to clip them out of here or something. But, uh, yeah. Got the Flatwoods Monster on the front. Got the UFO on top. And... Uh, Let's crack open this box and check her out. You can see we got the Foo Fighters here and uh, Flatwoods Monster with the UFO on the right hand side. And I think that's a uh, Men in Black on the left with the Foo Fighters, but yeah. It was hard to pull that Men in Black and you can see in the last video I finally got it. So this video was actually recorded before I got that Men in Black card which I've been searching for. So there's only one card that I'm missing. It's the... Uh, the full, um, oh, what is it called? It's the one full art card. I got the wilderness one. Oh, I should probably turn my cell phone on the, on silent here too. So uh, let's get into this. Got a frost ring and 33. This is going to be some sort of an orb. Yeah, it's a a pocket dimension orb. Pretty exciting. Then we got our dragon's rise. Gosh, I have so many of these cards at this point. Love that cannonball token too. It's a good one. Um, it's probably one of my favorite ones out of UFO. At this point, a lot of what you're going to hear is the same thing in each of these videos, just my opinions on the cards, which some I like, some I don't. I could even, maybe I should start doing a video, one of these ones where I have to re-record it, and I'll tell you if I like the card or don't like the card. I love this terraforming. I just want to point that out. That terraforming card is awesome. And almost at our hit card, which is a reverse Croco Dingo, an Australian card although i don't think it's really australian given most of these sets are based well all the sets are based in north america well america i should say mainly i don't know if there's any truly canadian cryptids that are based in canada but we share some with the states like bigfoot wendigo um i guess yeah no seance had some um some cryptids or some ghosts that were related directly to i think it was quebec so got the lady in red Trap Springer, Kodiak Dinosaur, Giant Squid, uh oh, we already see the other one. It's a Water Submergence. Cool card. You can see, I think it's the Iowa Dragon in there. There's a Chessie in there. Um, there's that one shark. I forget what its name is on there. But it's cool to see all these together. Uh, then we got the Men in Black. This was haunting me. Gosh, I wanted that card so bad. And I'm super glad I have it now. It's a relief. I actually ended up ordering one online too, so I now have two of those Men in Black, which I am eternally grateful for. They are hard cards to pull, and in UFO there aren't many cards that are hard to pull. I've pulled multiple of every card, and I've only pulled one Men in Black. So, got a tinfoil hat, love that. And we have another pocket dimension orb. There is, um, in UFO, there is a bit of clumping. And uh, I don't know what to say. It's uh, it's kind of expected at this point from MetaZoo. Uh, this video will have came out now after my seance box. And, you know, gosh, I don't know what to say about seance. To me, it is they they had the most potential for that set and yet it was the worst set i've ever opened in my life um actually it's it's up there with nightfall because i had two nightfall booster boxes that were awful but i had a, like something like four to six total nightfall boxes that i would deem inappropriate for metazoo to sell that with that little amount of hollows um i remember at the time people would say reverse uh no uh, true random and that's horseshit we know now um but yeah oh man seance could have been a banger and uh, unfortunately for me personally it was uh the biggest disappointment out of anything so i didn't have that opinion until after i actually got the booster box uh you know 
getting a booster box that's full of no halt no full hollows at all so it's not even yeah so having all reverse hollows in a booster box that you spend a bunch of money on uh completely inappropriate for a company to sell that in my opinion and uh i don't know if i'm off metazoo i'm just i'm not buying any more seance uh, and you'll see here, I'm, I'm done with UFO after this, but not in a negative way. Uh, UFO has it as issues. Uh, you can see that in every one of these booster boxes, they're loaded with hollows. So there were obviously was printing errors with hollows. Uh, I don't know. They've never released a statement and I wish MetaZoo would say something. Just go out there and, and talk about it to help provide some clarity. Cause it's, it's that in that, it's that line where there is a, where there's where there's uh, wishy-washiness. What's another word for it? Just where there's assumptions that can be made that really hurts their brand. And if they would just go out and say something like, you know what? Here's the issue we had with UFO. Here's how we're gonna fix it. That is such a huge thing in relationships with other people. Um, it, it, it's 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 therapy 101, and you can apply it to big business too. Um, and because you, once you lose these customers, I mean, and MetaZoo has been burning through customers, unfortunately, and, uh, I get why, uh, I, there's a lot of issues with that being said, I still feel like MetaZoo has potential. Um, this 50,000, no, 50 million revenue announcement is cool. It doesn't get paint a picture at all. So if you're getting hyped over it, I wouldn't because we don't know what that includes. We haven't seen a detailed printout. It's like something like you'd see in Flesh and Blood where Deloitte did a evaluation of the company and it turns out they're one of the top companies being exported from New Zealand right now, which is quite impressive. Um, but just an announcement of $50 million in revenue is good, but it doesn't tell you anything. Um, and this comes from a, a business sort of background. It, it tells you a, a very little but you need more information. Um, if I was given that information and told, so what do you deem this company? I would say, um, I would need more information before I could make a qualified judgment on whether this company is doing good or bad. Cause I think, um, I was talking to somebody and they said that Weiss Schwartz did something like over $300,000 in revenue and they actually didn't profit that year. So you got to keep that in mind. Revenue does not mean success. And, uh, as much as I'm hoping MetaZoo is doing well, I, uh, that all I'm saying is that announcement doesn't, it doesn't paint a picture at all. Um, it's a very small snapshot. So anyways, gargantuan glider. That's what's good about these videos is I can just kind of talk about my thoughts and, uh, y'all can just watch what I'm pulling. And I've got a lot of thoughts cause I love this. I really love this trading card game, but I'm also just disappointed you know a lot of these issues should have been fixed a while ago and you know what's interesting i i opened um a metazoo cryptid nation second edition box a little while ago and i've got another one i'm going to open too and i feel like they fixed the clumping issues and the boxes with no full hollows issues i've opened a bunch of those and i've never had the same issue that i've had with nightfall or um because of nightfall, there was clumping issues. There was issues of having no, when you'd pay 250 bucks for a booster box, and that's Canadian, um, from the retailer, so that's not second market, and having no hollows in there, like brutal, absolutely brutal and wrong, and that, that shouldn't be happening. Um, but then once you get to, you know, I thought that with, with Cryptid Nation Second Edition that had been fixed, there were issues with with wilderness, but not as pronounced. Uh, second edition, I would say, is probably the one that I felt was the most balanced box of them all. You didn't get a Mothman that easily, um, yet you got usually around 12 hollows, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, like one or two less. I've never gotten hosed on a Cryptid Nation second edition box, and it's still kind of hard to get those really hard to get cards too, so. I thought that they nailed that. I thought they had it fixed, you know. Um, then with UFO, like, gosh, I love UFO in many ways, but it scares me the number of hollows in the boxes. What does that mean? And that goes back to where we got on this conversation is, uh, was there, are these cards getting printed to oblivion? 
are there booster boxes without that aren't packed with hollows? Is it maybe just the first wave of booster boxes? Um, where are we at with this? Because that would provide some clarity on the on what's going on. Because clarity is so important, and that's we're just going in a circle now when I talk about that. Because you want to know as a customer, you want honesty, and that's where some of these companies get in in a bit of uh, hot water. So, I mean, I like I like Pokemon. They'll plan things to oblivion, and they'll let you know that. Like they they don't care that uh, they their way of dealing with some things is printing to oblivion. That's fair, but they're not uh, they're not really hiding it, you know. And it's hard to get good, like some of the the the, the uh, secret rare pulls in Pokemon, you know. Got the Grunch Road Monster, Wolf Among Sheep, Time Machine Blueprints. There's that bookmark blue. I like that card a lot, actually. I like the men in black on there. Polybius. This is a cool one, this arcade. It looks like you could maybe get sucked right into that guy. There used to be a show that was based on a uh, jukebox that you'd get sucked into. I forget what it was called. And it looks like we've got a cryptid, a 16. I'm trying to think of what this would be. Oh, the Foo Fighters. Yes, love this card. Very cool. This is one of the cards that I think is a great, um, a good pull for for UFO. Uh, it hasn't been super easy for me, but it hasn't been super difficult. It's one of those decent pull cards. Got our tree tokens. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before. UFO wasn't necessarily, a, like, oh, so when we get rid of the uh, the, the fact that we don't know how rare these hollows are which crushes the hollow uh, values because there's just so many in booster boxes i really my hope is that the first wave for some reason had was packed with with hollows and that it evens out or, or no maybe not evens out because then you got a bunch of booster boxes with no hollows and that's also super i'd even though i it hasn't affected me i've had that experience and you're going to lose customers with that pretty quickly but <clears throat> there are things that like I, I would say other than that ufo it didn't necessarily push things whereas seance i do feel like the art got pushed into a, a new a new direction the cards look amazing the art in the boxes they took it to the next level they really seance was a big step forward in my opinion in terms of art presentation uh cards that you could get but then you get booster boxes with that are mapped and booster boxes that have no hollows and not just a couple i've seen video after video of people with booster boxes with no hollows this isn't just a one-off deal this is like this is a bigger than that thing and that is that's pretty bad that's not just pretty bad that's that part is unforgivable that's where a company needs to, to step up you know and work on it now with all of this criticism constructive criticism keep in mind first it comes from a place of wanting success for the brand and a place of love um, the criticism that i've received in my life helped me get sober and that was a huge step in my life and if i didn't have people that were critical of me i would never have gotten to that stage uh, it's a mental health thing uh, it's really it comes from a place of love, and when you know that that criticism comes from a place of love, it can help you. It can totally motivate you. And I'm 10 years sober now, so that's uh, that's proof. And I was pretty bad. Um, I don't want to get too deep into that, but uh, that's just a bit of a side tangent here. So with all of this criticism comes, I think they can do better. And I really think they can. I think that it's, they're totally capable of doing better. I think that with Native, they've got a lot to prove. Although I've heard that said about Seance. I heard that said about UFO. I heard that said about Wilderness. Wilderness, I don't know. Um, people hyped it so much. I never got into the hype. When it came out, it had some good cards in it. I, I enjoyed some of the ones. I think that the, the expansion into the Dragons was a really good one. Um, Added, like the Dragon of Aconto Falls. It's kind of like Wendigo in some ways where it added a lot of... Uh, it added to the lore of, of MetaZoo. Same with the Iowa Dragon. That also added to the lore of MetaZoo. And uh, looking back, I do see that as a positive. Who else was in there? What's that little... Um, 
Oh, what's the little yellow guy? I forget what his name is. I know a lot of people go pretty... Not a squonk, it's something else. But uh, people go pretty crazy over that. So... Yeah, I don't think... I mean, the Wilderness also, they printed a thousand boxes. That At that point, that was a lesson learned from there. And that's what they... Seance was such a course correction in so many ways, you know. They had... They went from 100,000 boxes down to 50,000 boxes, and that was fantastic. That was a, a really, really good move on their part. And that shows that, that MetaZoo can truly grow. It's just these other issues that have been plaguing them. Wow, you know, something's got to be done. Um, it's time to have somebody over in China at the printers. Uh, I believe, and I say that in a... I, because from my understanding, the cards are being printed in China, which I don't have an issue with at all. Uh, what I'm saying is they just need somebody over there to, to, be, to be doing some quality control from the MetaZoo team, in my opinion, of course. I would be doing that if I was the, the product. Um, if, I was on the, uh, if I owned MetaZoo, I would be doing that at least because this, is a, this could be a big brand. I think it is one of the main challengers. This and Flesh and Blood. Probably, I have a friend that hypes me on Flesh and Blood, and I just trust him. I, this guy is uh, just somebody that I trust with a lot of stuff. Him and I don't agree on everything. In fact, we have some disagreements that I'm sure we'll always disagree on, but I do trust him in the, in the, in where he's coming from, and I, I, I also trust him in, in, in a lot of... Uh, I always value his opinion. Even when I don't agree with his opinion, I completely value it. It's a really cool relationship to have when you have somebody that maybe has a different approach at something. Um, and yet I truly value having disagreements. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but um, because it never affects the friendship. I have that with a lot of people, actually, where we have very different... Well, him and I don't have... I wouldn't say poetically, but I have other friends that are very politically different than me. And we have, um, those are some of the people I enjoy hanging out with the most. I love this headless chicken resurrection from the afterlife, Mike, the headless chicken. Now there's a cryptid that they haven't done yet, but I'm hoping when they go to, to the UK, they, they do. It's called Jeff, the talking mongoose. And what it is, is it's this mongoose. Well, supposedly it's a mongoose that was haunting a family. Its name was Jeff. I think it's spelled G-E-F. Jeff, the talking mongoose. And uh, it haunted this family back in the day. And uh, the one younger daughter would speak to Jeff, the talking mongoose. And if you want to know more, you got to w listen to la last podcast on the left. They do a, a, an episode on Jeff, the talking mongoose. And I highly recommend anything to do with last podcast on the left they do all the cryptids they do they do alien abductions they they cover it all and uh it's both informative and hilarious you got to be 18 plus though if you're younger than 18 um don't listen to it you're too young having kids has made me realize that um people are a lot more sensitive than i realized and uh the stuff that I grew up with consider that I considered funny isn't necessarily funny to everybody else. It's a weird time, that's for sure. Got the Intergalactic Space Council. I love that card with all the uh, all the different space guys. I think there was um so a couple cards. Let's talk about this. A couple cards I would add to UFO. I would add. The Fresno Nightcrawlers, I think that's an alien. I think it counts. I think it counts as an alien. I think that that could have been added to this set. Um, Metal Man of Alabama, I think Metal Man should have been part of this set too. I think that was a miss. Um, and they didn't have to be chase cards, but it would have been nice to see them in, in here as an actual card again. Or somewhere in here, I don't know, maybe as a promo. I'm not sure. Got the breakfast aliens. Invigorate. Speed demon. Accordion eater. Frost ring. There's that tinfoil hat. 
And number four. Oh, this is the, the what's his name with the laser coming out of his head, right? Totally is. I, I think I may have lifted the card up. I wasn't paying attention to the video. Um, the Van Meter Visitor. Gosh, I should read about him right now. And we should talk about this guy because I have consistently said I don't know very much about the Van Meter Visitor. And we should learn about this cryptid as we go through this. So this is from cryptids.fandom. They got a picture of a Van Meter Visitor, which is a pterodon, it looks like, with a laser coming out of its head. It says, 117 years ago, a strange creature was said to have paid a visit to the small town of Van Meter in Iowa. That must be the same area as, well, it's Iowa, so I'm assuming the Iowa dragon is in there. Is there? So this is um, the events occurred in October of 1903. They said a mysterious winged creature terrorized some of the town's residents during several nights in the course of a week. Descriptions of the beast suggested that it had large bat-like wings, left a terrible stench wherever it went, and even stranger, it fired beams bright of bright lights from its forehead. Okay. Gosh, he kind of looks like the Mothman in some ways. Very weird. There's a video here too. Hmm. I've never um. So cryptids I heard about before were obviously things like Bigfoot. Um, I've heard of UFOs before. Everybody has. Uh, which um, Mothman? Because Mothman prophecies I loved as a kid. I thought that was an amazing movie. Jersey Devil, I've heard about, but this Van Meter visitor, never heard about it. So this says, the bizarre account recalls how several of the locals attempted to shoot the beast, but their gunfire didn't appear to have any effect. Fed up with the menace, a group of townsfolk banded together one evening and pursued the creature into an abandoned coal mine. That's kind of like uh, the Mothman and the TNT factory. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. There they confronted not one, but two of the beasts, which both turned and disappeared in down into the gloom of the mine as the men opened fire, never to be seen again. Interesting. Well, we know that. Now, Griddle Greaser Pete. This, is, this guy's got to be made up, right? This pig can't be real. I was super glad. I think this is the first time I pulled him in, in real time, not in video time. Um, let's see, Griddle, Greaser, Pete, you are not outside of the meta, oh my gosh, no, it is, this, Griddle, Greaser, Pete is actually a real thing, you've heard it from me, I think I just got a scoopy, as the guys from Made the Zoo would say, it's a fictional humanoid pig originating from old North American mythology, Fine griddle cake, said the stranger as he fired up his plate and another snack. This is weird. This has got to be more folklore, right? Yeah, this is folklore. Totally. That is so funny. I thought that this was made up, but it's not, it looks like. A fearsome critter. Interesting. Okay, well, that's good. Now, what about mini T-Rex is the question. Is mini T-Rex a real thing? Yeah, Griddle Greaser Pete from 1925. So this is a, this is something that existed before MetaZoo. Why does it fit with UFO? So the two cards that I would say are the most uh, misfit cards, mini T-Rex and Griddle Greaser Pete. Mini T-Rex. Cryptid. I'm looking this up too as we go. This is sort of, I guess, I should have thought about this before. Um, because this gives me something to talk about that's a little bit different than just announcing the cards. And since these videos were recorded with such poor audio, it actually gives me um, the ability to talk about some of the stuff that I wasn't able to. So they have something called a Kaize or a Kaize Rex, a gigantic theropod cryptid from the Democratic republic of congo in africa that wouldn't be the mini t-rex because this is all based in north america from my understanding all these first sets are north american cryptids the mini t-rex
Oh, interesting. Here we go. Okay. I've got information on the mini T-Rex. So we've got content, people. The mini T-Rex is a theropod-like animal which lives in the four corner corners region of the southwest United States. It is three to five feet tall and weighs around 200 pounds or more. It has been given the nickname mini T-Rex because it closely resembles a miniature version of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. According to most of the eyewitness reports, that was not a sentence on its own. That was a continuation of the last sentence. It is possible that this might be the same animal as the river dinos, the mountain boomer, and the Oklahoma <laughs> raptor. Interesting. So UFO, they actually have the mountain boomer also. I don't know anything about that one. So let's go into that one next. This one's still. For, this is from a, a fandom website. The mountain boomer is a small-sized dinosaur, bipedal dinosaur evolved from a thesalosaurus like ornithopod. Female mountain boomers are usually generally six to seven feet tall, while smaller males are usually three to five feet tall. So mountain boomers, this must be a cryptid that people seem to think they see in the mountains. It says mountain boomers are found everywhere, but tend to nest in more remote mountain regions where they sleep lives... They sleep lives in cave or burrows. That doesn't make any sense. That's uh, that's just bad grammar. It is extremely fast, swift, and agile, easily being able to outrun a human or other predator. It is a tremendous leap. Cryptids, or creatures are shy and reclusive, which is, I think, part of the definition of being a cryptid. And they flee as defense. They have a strange wolf-like howl. Now, given there's typos and poor sentence structures and all of this description, I would say this article is not a very legitimate article. Now, the river dinos. Oh, gosh. I didn't know that those actually were something. And there's a picture of somebody that seems to think they had river dinos. Hmm. They've been reported across the country. Oh, the river dinos are mainly in, in Colorado. In Oklahoma, a raptor creature was sighted. It might have actually been a river dino. This is the same website. I don't know if this is, is real. It says they appear to be somewhat similar to Compsognathus, a small species of dinosaur, and are compared to three-foot-tall bipedal lizards. Huh, like the end, and what scientists say is they actually could just be an undiscovered species of bipedal iguanid lizard. A lot of big words, but uh, yeah. I didn't know that a lot of the stuff's in there, but we got a UFO here. Yes, I am cornering the market of UFO. Check that out. I think, was this the first UFO I got? I was pretty excited. I remember that. This one looks like it has, no, it doesn't have a, I don't think this one actually has, it looks like a print line, but it's not a print line. What it actually is, is uh, it's just uh, the art. There's that Men in Black that I was looking for at the time. So when I was pulling these cards, I didn't actually know that the Men in Black card was a hollow because I didn't look up any information on this on UFO before I started cracking packs. The first four, maybe I did the first six, uh, maybe five or six booster boxes that I opened like in real time order um, where uh, I, I didn't look up what cards I could pull. And I actually had a point I thought, oh, you can't actually get the, uh, you can't actually get the men in black in a hollow. And then once I got through those, I was like, okay, I got to look it up. And I saw that you could, and I was eternally defeated until just a little while ago, but I already posted the video of the men in black. I'm just, I'm still obsessed about it. So I'm going to talk about it. The USO is a cool card. I think it totally fits the theme here. Um, yeah, I don't know. UFO, UFOs, um, some days I think it's a great set. Some days I think it's a letdown. I don't know. I go back and forth. It's, it's, it's not even a divisive set, I would say. It's just um, if, what it felt like to me was... Okay, they launched this thing into space, and the day that UFO released, or maybe it was the day after, all of a sudden they were just like 
pumping seance and I felt like it didn't have very much time to breathe either but maybe that was a way to deal with the fact that they figured that the 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 booster boxes were a bit mangled and they were full of hollows and uh, they wanted to just move on and sort of draw attention but um, that if you're in a relationship my suggestion is don't do that that is not a way a successful way of uh, of having a relationship you should talk things through and have open communication, people. Um, that's how you have a successful relationship is fights are going to happen. People are going to make mistakes. This isn't just like uh, romantic relationships either. People are always going to make mistakes. If you want to have a good relationship, it's about talking about it, being forgiving, which I think that the MetaZoo community can be. That's the thing is I think that like... If, if I was running MetaZoo, I have this community of people that are forgiving and that uh, there, there is a subsection that aren't, but they all are mostly gone already because they rightfully have been wrong. Well, not rightfully have been wronged. They've rightfully had reasons to leave. But there's this community here that actually is quite forgiving. Even like people that have been booted that are back uh, since the unbanning. Um, you have a community of people that are so forgiving and MetaZoo could totally use that to their advantage where they could be honest and be this open, transparent company that says, hey, this is why your Gilded Decks aren't out yet. Here's where we're at today. We haven't gotten any, you know, just staying on top of all this stuff and communication or here's what happened with UFO. Uh, here's how we're going to fix it in the future. That is how you have a good relationship, whether it's a company or a person or, or any of it. Um, and that's... Gosh, they would just, I just see MetaZoo if they, if they had the ability to do that. Um, I think that they would see that the fans are there for them back. It's when the opposite is done and, and things are ignored or, yeah, ignored is a good word, ignored, uh, not spoken about. That's where you lose fans. That's how relationships break down and, uh. You don't want that. My minor was in psychology, so I have. Uh, although I'm a stats person, um, we're an actuarial, you could say. Well, I am an actuarial. I should say you could say a stats. My program was heavily based in statistics, though, and um, we did a lot of stats classes that crossed over with the actuarial field. Uh, so my degree is through a math and stats department uh, at the university, and uh, my minor though is in psychology, which I'm way more interested in. Uh, the stat stuff is just, um, it's interesting, but the psychology, so much more interesting. Relationships, humans, humans are messy. That's what we know. That's what I know. Life is messy. And uh, if we expected it not to be, um, well, I could, I could paint myself into a corner if I said that. Life is messy, but how you deal with it is, is what's more important. And um, I hope that they get there one day. Because they could be better than, they could like with Magic the Gathering and what's going on there. There's a big opening for, for transparent a transparent company to sweep in, and that's where Cryptid's showing up. Man, gosh, they impress me. This uh, Tanner from Cryptid, he or Cryptic, Cryptid, um, this guy just impresses me with how he has, how he's ran the company so far. Um, so far, I have been thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. I'm so excited for the app to come out so I can learn how to play Cryptic so I can then play in real life with my wife in our starter decks. It's, um, yeah, pretty excited. Pretty dang excited. Got the Spirit Shadow. And the dragons rise. I could see that 20 and I could see the flames. Um, with native, uh, something that I'm really excited for. Although I don't know if I'm going to buy native because uh, seance. I got to just take a, a, a step back after seance here. I'm, um, I'm disappointed after opening seance. And that shows... Anyways, that was the all that was it for my booster box. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we got a black screen here. So I'm gonna go like, comment, and subscribe.